I just want to encourage you to know that prayer makes a difference. Prayer really changes things. You know, there's so many people right now that would have been in a different um, place in their lives if they just spent more time in prayer. There's so many people right now that you can't even remember the last time that you prayed. You can never remember the last time that you took your Bible, you sat down and you just read and just spent time with the Lord. So many people right now, they don't ever remember, you know, what it feels like to experience the presence of God again. It's been a long time, but I want to encourage you today. I don't care how long it's been since you last prayed. I don't care how long it's been since you last read your word. You can always start afresh. We serve a God who anytime that you are ready, God is always ready. God doesn't need to get ready for you. God is always ready to accept you. God is always ready to welcome you back. God is always ready to just say, oh, I miss you so much, my son, my daughter. It is time for you to come on back home. It is time again for you to experience the presence of the Lord. It is time again for you to experience the power of God. I'm telling you, there's something amazing that happens when you pray. Prayer is such a powerful, powerful tool that we have. You know, with all the stuff that's happening in the world, the only way for you to get through this is just to spend time first in the word of God. Because you don't know what to pray for if you don't spend time to know the Lord. You don't know what to pray for if you don't read your word to understand the standards that God has set, what God requires of you and of me. So maybe it's been a long time since you've prayed, right? And you're saying, Matthew, I got to get back to it, man. I got to get. Yes, you have to get back to it. And that is why the Lord instructed me that for 30 days, pray and fast and seek my face. You know, a lot of times when people think about fasting and prayer, you know, it sounds so boring. It sounds so, oh, my goodness. You know, what do I say? What do I do? You know, does this even work? I want to let you know that it works. I want to let you know that prayer changes. First, prayer changes you. See, before prayer can change your circumstances, before you can get that breakthrough, whatever breakthrough that you believe in God for, it always starts with you because there's something that happens that God would touch your heart. God would take that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. The reason why people can pray and why they don't get that breakthrough, because when you're praying, your heart is not in it. When you're praying, you're not fully committed to it. See, all of us need a new heart. Every day we need a new heart. And that is why Jesus said this in Luke 9, 23. If any man, if any woman, if anyone desires to come after me, that means that regardless of who you are, regardless of where you're from, regardless of your socioeconomic status, Regardless of whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're green, you're orange, you're black, you're white, regardless of who you are, the Lord Jesus said, if anyone, that is an open invitation for everybody desires to come after me, let them deny themselves and pick up their cross daily. You know, denying yourself is a process. It's not something that happens overnight. Denying yourself desires that you feel like, you know what? I need to have these things. It's a process. And God understands that denying yourself is a process, but it's not an excuse. Just because it's a process doesn't mean that you have to turn it into an excuse. You see people use that as an excuse. You know what? You know, I need some time, Lord, you know, so I'm going to keep doing this and tell me to get off of it or whatever that thing is. God is going to give you time. But tomorrow is never guaranteed, nor is it promised. So I want you to understand something. 
why God has given you time. Remember this. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. So I want you to take every opportunity that you get to open up your heart to the Lord Jesus. And say, Lord God, I need you. Oh, we live in a world today where so many people are overwhelmed with so much that's going on. Do you feel overwhelmed right now? You can always reset. And that is what prayer does. Prayer allows you to reset. If you're going through certain things that you can't figure out. If you're going through things you don't understand. If you're going through hardship. Prayer can allow you to reset. You know, you don't have to go through things in order for God to reveal himself to you. We live in a society in the world that makes it seem like in order for God to prove to you that he is God. And which, by the way, God doesn't have to prove anything to anybody because he is still God regardless. But in order for God to prove himself to you, people think that you have to go through a traumatic experience. You have to suffer. You have to suffer, suffer. And then God is going to show up. You know, the Bible said that I have come that you might have life. Those are the words of Jesus. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So part of what we're doing during this restoration period is that whatever you were supposed to have, whatever you've lost in the past, God wants to restore that back to you. The beautiful thing about restoration is this. Whatever you're supposed to have before, God is not only going to give it to you, he is going to give you double for your trouble. God is going to give you abundance, much more than what you, you even deserve. He's going to give that to you because God is a rewarder. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently. You know, there are times when I seek the Lord, not because I want something, not because I need something. There are times when I seek the face of the Lord Jesus because I just want to love on him. I said, Lord, I love you. Lord, I need you. And that's what we have to do in order to build that relationship with him. And there are times when I just spend with the precious Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, I need you today. I need your touch. I need understanding. I need clarity. I need direction. I need everything from you. You're all that I have. You're all that I need. I need you more than the air that I breathe. When you get to a place in life, when God becomes all that you need, let me tell you something. God will begin to open up doors for you. Stop seeking those doors. Matthew 6, 33, I believe said this, this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. It is says seek ye first that house. Seek ye first that relationship. Seek ye first that opportunity. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, the will of God, and his righteousness, and everything else that you desire that is in accordance with the will of God will be yours. See, when you go after God, it shows God that you want him more than what he can give you. 